Hi boys and girls and welcome to our Father's Day lesson. What are some things children call their fathers? Some children call their fathers Daddy, Papa, or Dad. The Bible tells us God is like a wonderful loving Daddy. He calls himself the Heavenly Father and he's the greatest father in the universe. He always perfectly cares for his children. If you have believed in Jesus to save you from sin, you are God's child and he is your heavenly father. Say with me, God is the greatest father. Let me hear you. God is the greatest father. That's good. The Bible tells us many ways God is the greatest father and we're going to learn some of them today. Here we go. Joseph served in Pharaoh's court. Get it? <laughs> you know breaking laws is bad. You know who the worst lawbreaker was in the Bible? Moses. He broke all of the commandments at once. <laughs> you get it? Hi everyone, we're going to be reading a story today called Good Good Father, and it was written by Chris Tomlin and Pat Barrett. A colorful kite soared in the sky, and then, whoosh, it caught on an oak tree branch. Don't worry, I can help, Tucker called, tugging the kite this way and that. Tucker was a little bear. Helping others made him happy, and his friends needed lots of help. Some bears were always fighting. Some bears were sick. Some bears couldn't read. Some bears were hungry, and some bears were sad. Tucker didn't know how to help his friends. I could ask the king for help, Tucker cried. Maybe, just maybe, 
If I give him the perfect gift, he will help us. So off Tucker went on a journey to see the good king who lived in a castle where the door was always open. It wasn't long before a group of big, strong raccoons blocked Tucker's path. Stop, one raccoon ordered. What do you want? I w w want the king to take the king the perfect gift. But, but, but I don't know what to choose, Tucker explained. The king is a good warrior, the raccoon said. Why don't you bring him this shield? The king will keep you safe, cheered the other raccoons. Down the road, an owl swooped down in front of Tucker. Hoot, hoot, the owl called out. What would you like to learn? I'm trying to figure out the perfect gift to take to the king, Tucker replied. The king teaches from his wise book, the owl told him. I'm certain the king would be pleased if you gave him something to read. As Tucker walked away, the owl hooted. Go see the king. He is a good teacher. As he walked, Tucker spotted foxes wearing long white jackets. How are you feeling? asked a concerned fox. I feel fine, but some of the bears in my town are sick, Tucker replied. I'm on my way to see the king and ask for his help. Here, take these bandages as a gift, the fox said. The king is a good doctor. More confused than ever, Tucker sat to rest. Are you here for a snack? A squirrel asked. Actually, I'm trying to find the perfect gift for the king, Tucker explained, looking around. Wow, you have so many yummy looking fruits and vegetables. Why don't you take the king these seeds, the squirrel suggested. The king is a good farmer. He will help you grow food. Far away, Tucker heard music and singing and laughter. He followed the sounds until he spotted some happy turtles. Jump on in, now's your chance. This turtle town just loves to dance, a turtle sang. We used to be sad, but now everything is a celebration because of the king. What kind of gift do you think he would like, Tucker asked. Give the king this violin, the turtle said. He's a good musician. The king will bring you joy. All the animals Tucker met had told him different stories about the king and what the perfect gift would be. But Tucker still didn't know what to give him as he looked up to the castle at the top of the tall hill. As it always was, the door was wide open. Tucker tiptoed toward the open door. Tucker! The king ran toward him with a huge smile. I'm so glad you're here. It looks like you need my help. My friends are in trouble, and I thought if I brought you the perfect gift, you would help us, Tucker explained shyly. You brought the perfect gift, the king said with great love. Now let's go help your friends. Tucker wasn't sure which gift was the perfect one. Even so, he hurried off with the king. On their journey back to the little bear's town, Tucker asked question after question. Are you a warrior? Yes, the king answered. Are you a teacher? Yes, the king repeated. Are you a doctor? Are you a farmer? Are you a me? Are you a musician? Yes, yes, and yes, the king patiently replied. But how can you be all of these things? The little bear asked. The king smiled. I am all of these things because I am a good father. Tucker didn't understand. Soon the king and the little bear reached Tucker's town. When the bears saw the king, one by one they bowed down. The king walked through the town and gave help to everyone who needed it. Most of all, the king, the good father, loved them. Tucker said to the king, Now I see. You are not only a good father, you are a good, good father. A good, good father protects us. A good, good father teaches us. A good, good father makes us well. A good, good father gives us what we need. A good, good father fills life with music and laughter. And most of all, a good, good father loves us. Dear King, I have one more question. 
Which gift was the perfect gift? Tucker asked. You are the perfect gift, the king told the little bear. You came to me when you needed help. You trusted me. You bring me great joy, and I love you with all my heart, the same way I love all my children. Tucker, curled up with sleepy eyes and a full heart, whispered, You really are a good, good father. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this book, and I will see you next book. Hey, kids. Can you tell me what car did the wise man drove to see Jesus? Make a wise hmm. guess. Mm. Hmm. Oh, a Honda Accord, because they were all in one Accord. Wow. I bet you didn't know that. <laughs> Hi kids, here we go again, and next one for you. Why did Jonah didn't trust the ocean? Make a guess. Because he felt there was something fishy. Oh, oh. Oh, you hear that one? <laughs> Hi boys and girls. Today we're going to talk about the greatest father. Did you know the Bible uses the word father more than 1,000 times? I want to tell you about some of the fathers in the Bible. Some good and some bad. And then I want to tell you about the greatest father of all times. Can you match these Bible heroes with their fathers? The first one is Moses. Maybe you've heard about how God used Moses to deliver the people of Israel from slavery in Egypt and how he made a dry path through the Red Sea for Moses to lead the Israelites through. Who was Moses' father? Was it A. Lamech, B. Malachi, or C. Amram? Well, the answer is Amram. Moses probably barely knew his father Amram because Moses was taken away from his parents to live in the palace when he was very young. Moses wasn't able to be with his father most of the time, but God, his heavenly father, cared for him and used him to do many amazing things. Our next Bible hero is Isaac. Isaac's father was 100 years old when Isaac was born. Even though his father was very old, God promised he would have a son and that his family would eventually become a whole nation of people. Who was Isaac's father? A. Abraham B. Jacob or C. David well, the answer is Abraham. Isaac was born when Abraham was very old, just like God promised. His family eventually became the Israelites, the nation God used to bring the Savior into the world. Our next Bible hero is Noah. Maybe you've heard about Noah and how God used him to build an ark to save Noah's family and lots of animals from the flood that God sent to judge the sin of the world. Who was Noah's father? Was it A, Laban, B, Seth, or C, Lamech? The answer is Lamech. Lamech named his son Noah, which means rest or comfort, because he was looking forward to the day God would rescue the world from the problems and the pain caused by sin. Our next Bible hero is Leah. Some people thought Leah was ugly, but God didn't think so. He loved her and chose her to be a part of his rescue plan by making her the great, 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 great grandma of Jesus Christ. Who was Leah's father? Was it A, Moses, B, Laban, or C, Joseph? 
The answer is Laban. Laban was a sneaky, dishonest man. He tricked and cheated people over and over again. Even though Leah's father wasn't fantastic, God, her heavenly father, was. Our next Bible hero is Jonathan. Jonathan was a mighty warrior and a prince. But God chose David to be king instead of him. Instead of being jealous or upset, Jonathan became David's best friend and even helped him become king. He was an incredible friend. Who was Jonathan's father? Was it A, Solomon, B, Saul, or C, Herod? The answer is Saul. Saul was extremely jealous when God chose David to be the new king. Saul tried to kill David, but his son, Jonathan, helped David escape from Saul over and over. Saul hated his own son for disobeying him to save David's life. But Jonathan knew it was more important to obey God, his heavenly father. The next Bible hero is Josiah. Josiah became a king when he was only eight years old. Eight years old. He helped the people stop worshiping false gods and start following the one true God. Anybody else out there who's eight years old? He was one of the great kings Israel ever had. Who was his father? A. Ammon. B. Ahab. Or C, Solomon. Can you guess? The answer is Ammon. Ammon was a very bad father and a very bad king who led the people away from worshiping God. But even though Josiah had a terrible father who died when he was only a boy, God, his heavenly father, helped Josiah to be a good and great king. Our final Bible hero is Esther. Maybe you've heard about the way God used Queen Esther to rescue the Israelites from being totally destroyed by an evil enemy. Who was her father? A. Moses B. Levi or C. Mordecai? The answer is Mordecai. And he wasn't really a biological father to Esther. Esther's parents died when she was very young. So her relative Mordecai became her foster parent and took care of her. She didn't have her parents, but God, her heavenly father, used her to rescue the entire nation of Israel. Some of these Bible heroes had good fathers, some of them had bad fathers, and some of them barely knew their fathers at all. All of them have one thing in common. They had an amazing heavenly father, God. God is the greatest father anyone could ever have. He is better than 10 billion of the best dads on earth all put together. The Bible says we can talk to God and enjoy him like a loving father. Matthew 6 verse 9 says, Our Heavenly Father, hallowed be thy name. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. And hallowed means holy, or hallowed means holy, special, reverenced, honored, and treated with extreme respect. God is the greatest, most honored, most holy person of all time. He's better than all the other fathers who have ever lived. And after these jokes from some of these dads, I'm going to use the word father to tell you why. What's the difference between Jesus and pizza?
Jesus can't be taught. <laughs> Did Eve ever have a date with Adam? No, just an apple. <laughs> just an apple. F is for faithful. God is faithful. Faithful means that God always does what he says he will do. God never breaks or forgets a promise. Maybe you have a good dad who has made promises, but he forgets them or things happen and he's not able to keep them. Maybe you have a father who has hurt you by breaking his promises. God never does that. You can always trust him. Lamentations chapter 3 verse 22 and verse 23 says the faithful love of the Lord never ends his mercies never cease great is his faithfulness his mercies begin afresh each morning so you can always count on God to be what he says he will be and to do what he says he will do God is a faithful father God is the greatest father. A is for affectionate. God is affectionate. Affectionate is a fancy word that means loving. God loves you. God loves you so much that he wants you to be his child. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 1, the first part of verse 1 says see how very much our father loves us for he calls us his children and that is what we are God made you to be loved by him his love is better than any other father's love because God's love is perfect and God's love never stops God is a loving father God is the greatest father T is for timeless. Other fathers, even good ones, sometimes get too busy or tired to spend time with their children. They can't always be there, but God can. God has no beginning or end. He is always the same, and he always has time for you. There's a verse in the Bible in Isaiah chapter 40, and verse 28 it says have you never heard have you never understood the lord is the everlasting god the creator of all the earth he never grows weak or weary no one can measure the depths of his understanding so god never runs out of time or gets tired he's never too busy to listen to you or care about you God is a timeless father. H is for holy. God is holy. Holy means God is completely set apart from sin and completely perfect. He is the only father who never sins or makes mistakes. God never thinks, says, or does anything wrong. He's always good all the time. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 48 Matthew chapter 5 and verse 48 says but you are to be perfect even as your father in heaven is perfect you and I are not perfect like God is we were born wanting to sin against him by lying cheating hating and doing many other things to break his perfect laws our sin separates us from God we can't possibly be good enough to be with him, but he has made a way for us to be holy too. He wants to give us his holiness so we can be with him forever. God is a holy father. E, everywhere. God is everywhere. Other fathers can only be one place at a time, but God is everywhere all the time. Everywhere you go, God is always with you. He's in your home, he's in your school, 
He's in your church. He's with you when you cry and when you laugh. He's a father who is always with his children. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 5 says, my bookmark fell out here. Let me get the Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 5 says, Don't love money. Be satisfied with what you have. For God has said, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. So, God is a father who loves being with his children everywhere they go. God is the greatest father. R is for rescuer. God is a rescuer because he rescues people from sin. Sin is anything we think, say, or do that breaks God's perfect rules like lying, cheating, and hating. If we die without being rescued from our sin, we will be separated from God in a terrible place of punishment forever. God is a loving Father, so He made the way for you to be rescued from sin. 1 John chapter 4 and verse 14 says, Furthermore, we have seen with our own eyes and now testify that the Father sent His Son to be the Savior of the world. God and His perfect Son, Jesus, planned for Jesus to be the Savior who rescues people from sin. Jesus willingly let people nail Him to a cross where He bled and died to take the punishment for our sins. After Jesus died, He was buried in a tomb and on the third day, God the Father brought him back to life. Jesus is alive. God the Father planned this so we could be rescued from our sin. God is the greatest, most amazing Father of all time. You can read the Bible to learn more ways that God is the amazing Heavenly Father. God wants to be your Heavenly Father. If you've never believed in Jesus as your Savior from sin, the Bible tells you how God can become your Heavenly Father. John chapter 1 and verse 12, Jesus actually tells us how we can become sons of God. He says, But to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. So this means that everyone who believes that Jesus really did die and really did come alive again to pay the punishment for sin is rescued from sin and becomes God's child. If you believe in Jesus, you won't have to be far away from God. God will be with you for the rest of your life to help you to get to know Him better. After you die, God will take you to be with Him in His perfect home, heaven, forever and ever. Whether you have a good dad, a bad dad, or even if you don't have a dad in your home at all, God loves you and He wants to be your Heavenly Father. If you want to know more about becoming a child of God, we can look more closely at what the Bible says about that. If you've already believed in Jesus as your Savior, you can honor and enjoy God as your Heavenly Father every day. Matthew 6 verse 9 says, Our Father in Heaven, hallowed be thy name. You have lots of reasons to honor and enjoy your Heavenly Father. He is faithful. You can trust Him. He is affectionate. He loves you. He is timeless. He's never too busy for you. He's holy. He never sins or makes mistakes. He's everywhere with you all the time wherever you go. He is a rescuer. He rescued you from sin so you could be with Him forever. You can talk to Him as your Heavenly Father every single day and thank Him for being the most awesome, wonderful, perfect, honored Father of all time.